Turn off the phone, great. Setting up your webinar for Facebook Live, and then I have to go over here pretty soon. Streaming, might be, don't know. You guys know how this works, I go here. Hit this button, don't worry, this mug's currently empty, but it's gonna have tea in it soon, guys and girls and non-binary gendered individuals posts okay let's check this out all right there we go i click that public oh wait no don't do that i did the wrong thing guys sorry that's why you have to watch this process to see my humanity in action this is me modeling coach right now and leader uh there we go hello david medina all right, and I'm gonna move the Zoom window up here. So it looks like I'm looking at the camera, but I'm actually gonna look at my eyes. I'm gonna shrink this a little bit. I'm gonna talk about everything I'm doing because that's fun for me. Okay, here it goes. Time to pour the tea into the cup. Mm -hmm, that's coming out. Steamy, it's gonna be a good one. All right, I'm just gonna turn my phone around so I don't have this distracticon thing here. All right. Well, let's start with a sip, guys. David, Cami, good morning. Let's sip this tea, or good evening, or good afternoon. I think, David, you're in uh, España. Hola, amigo. Uh, muchos hola. Was that correct? Can I say muchos hola? Can it be an extreme hello? I guess I just put exclamation marks at the front and the back. I don't know how that works. I'm curious about the um, how in Spanish you get bonus exclamation marks. You get the question at the front as well as the back. I kind of like that. And something I really enjoy is a punctuation mark that's never, it's not actually kind of made its way into the mainstream. It's a suggested punctuation mark. I'm not making this up. It's called an irony mark. And the way the, you can look this up on Wikipedia. The way an irony mark looks like is a question mark with an exclamation mark through it. So it's like both a question mark and an exclamation mark, just one dot at the bottom. I suppose it could be two dots overlapping. So you wouldn't actually know if it's one or two. Crazy, these, these alternative punctuation marks. But the irony mark is used to indicate when you're saying something ironically, which I don't, would that take away from the irony? Because irony is like when one, it occurs as one thing, but a different thing is underneath. Like does pointing to the fact that you're being ironic remove the irony in the moment? I don't know. These are questions that I have. Anyhow, I think that's a cool uh, punctuation mark that I would like to see more. And maybe I'll start using that. I also, the other way I convey that is the smiley that is an upside down head. So it's a upside down smiley or a smiley standing on his head. So these are things that I enjoy that occupy my attention. Happy Friday. We're on, this is the, I'm just going to reuse jokes. We're on week 6 billion of uh, the lockdown, the quarantine lockdown. I don't know how y'all have been handling it, but I've been, let's see, what's been here this week? Lots of ups, ups and downs. Um, it's definitely been a challenge for Bay and I in, in this, you know, we've just we're so close in our space. There's nowhere to go. There's no pressure valves. We can only, it's, it's like, uh, it's like a really good medicine ceremony or a really good coaching session where there's no outs you can't leave. You just got to be here with what's showing up. So, excuse me. It's definitely been a challenge. Um, what else? I'm just looking around my office to see if there's anything here that I'd like to share. There's not it's kind of boring. Maybe I'll share some of the stuff I find myself doing more of. Let's share the good, the bad, and the ugly, or maybe just the good and the bad. Hola, Maria. Uh, com, como esta? I think it's como esta, or maybe como y tú. I could say tú, right? We're on at this point. I think I could get away with that. Uh, so uh, let's see. Things I notice I'm doing more of. I notice I'm drinking more than I would normally. Reach for that drink, and then the second and the third. I'm playing more video games, kind of. So the video games is an interesting one. One, I'm bored. I don't know about you guys, I'm bored. You may have no, como, oh, como esta tu? Como esta tu? Okay, got it. The, this is a brief digression. I really wanna learn Spanish, but I have not made any commitment to do so yet. 
And one of the things I notice, so just acknowledging that wanting something is not the same as being committed to it. And consequently, the results that I'm generating in terms of learning Spanish are commensurate with wanting something and not being committed to it. Oh, estás, está, como está tú. Um, in French, I know the pronouns and je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, il, elle. I know the pronouns and I know the conjugations. Good morning, Amanda, or evening. The conjugations, and I know like how those words fit together. And in Spanish, como esta tu, como estoy, sometimes they drop a word. That, I find that very confusing. And um, it's almost like without taking lessons, it's hard to learn a language. That's I don't want to say that completely, but that is the experience I'm having. Morning, Heather. So where was I? What was I talking? Oh yeah, things I'm doing more of, things I'm doing less of. So I'm playing more video games in part because I'm more bored, which is why I made a post yesterday about what boredom is, an invitation for us to go deeper and um, where we're kind of unwilling to go deeper. And the cool thing is that I'm playing less video games by myself and more with friends. So this is almost the first time I think ever, or at least in a long, long while where my friends and I have made a committed effort to like, hey, Let's get together and play this game with each other. And so we've been playing, um, for those of you that are gamers, and I can I consider myself one such gamer, for those of you that are gamers, we've been playing uh, Divinity Original Sin DOS 2. The abbreviation, this is kind of a fun little, fun little thing. The abbreviation for Divinity Original Sin is DOS. So it could be, if you were Spanish, you'd call it DOS DOS which is, again, there's another dos in there because you're saying dos twice. Anyhow, I feel like I might be digressing a little bit. So we've been playing a bunch of that, which is a role-playing game where you all collect and save the world, of course. Uh, Sunday morning brunches, my friends and I get together, we do a Zoom brunch. And during that, we play a virtual fishing game. So I eat my cereal, sometimes spill milk in my beard, which is annoying. And while we do that, we're playing this stupid, stupid virtual fishing game called Fishing Planet. And the funny thing about fishing is I don't like it. There's very little that I love about fishing. David, I love, Dos Dos is very good. One of my faves. Um, fishing's boring and the game is boring to me, but it's cool to just have something to do with your friends. So we're just sitting, looking at this virtual lake, casting our lines and waiting. And I was saying to my friends, because I don't really know fishing, is this like, is there something I'm meant to be doing? Do I need to like jiggle the, the mouse or something? And they're like, no, nah, you just wait, like fishing. I'm like, oh, got it. You just do that and then you wait. So it approximates the experience I have fishing very well. Um, <laughs> so we're doing that. I'm doing more of those two things a lot. I am working out incredibly consistently. So there's something, I don't know what's happened there. I think it might be because being stuck inside is driving this desire in me to not let that impact the, the gains I've made in a project Operation Smoking Hot Bod. So I'll talk a little bit about that project now. Project Operation Smoking Hot Bod is the, it grew because for probably 10 years plus, I've, I've always kind of, who doesn't, well, that's a dumb question. I've always wanted six pack abs and to look like super great had this desire, I get a little flush saying this, owning that fact. And um, for the, like early back in the day, 10 years ago, I was playing a lot of competitive squash. And then I, so I was working out a lot, exercising a lot, building a lot of muscle, but I would also eat commensurate to that. So I'd come home and I'd eat dinner. And then before I went to bed, I'd eat a giant bowl of granola, which once I reached 40, no longer worked. And I started to track some of the calories I was eating. And I was like, holy crap, that's like two meals that I'm eating. That's a lot of sugar. So, um, and the way that was just kind of the way it went is I would try to do it on my own. I wouldn't really want to bring anyone on board. I wanted to know the right answer. I wanted to know how to do this. I didn't want to have to open myself up to the vulnerability of getting supported in taking that project on. Hey, who? And eventually I reached the point where I said, fuck it, fuck it. This is not what I'm committed to in terms of standing for people. This is not what I'm committed to in terms of um, 
like being a coach, walking their walk. It's not what I'm committed to in terms of my relationship with getting supported. And it's not what I believe. I don't believe that the best thing to do is to jealously guard this thing so I don't have to get helped by someone who knows better than me. I believe that by unfolding and opening up, stuff can happen. And so what happened was I turned about probably 38, 39, a couple of years ago, and my metabolism was like, guess what? That's how old you are now. And I started to put on more weight and I realized I don't like that and I want to do something about it and I want to have this go differently. So I hired a nutritionist and I hired a trainer and I've been working with both of those people, which has opened up some incredible insights. One of which was the, the way it would typically go for me is that I would try to reduce my calories by cutting out almost everything. And then I would eat, I just wasn't eating enough protein, which is what really fills you up. Instead, I'd eat a whole bunch of carbs and then I would, carbs don't really satiate you that well. So I'd sit there and get hungry and hungry and hungrier. And then I'd snack with more carbs. And so my body wasn't getting what it needed. And I was actually like, because of the way I'd cheat, I was actually eating more than I thought I was. And it would just go around in circles and it wouldn't work. So anyhow, it's been a really eye-opening experience. I love the guy that I'm working with, um, the nutritionist. He is so brilliant to the point sometimes where he starts going off onto like, he starts spinning off into another orbit and like, uh, okay, I need to just have you tell me like, what are the numbers I should follow? Give me something really simple. And uh, so anyhow, in this lockdown, I notice how important um, it is for me to keep working out. Like somehow something has shifted where the gym and putting on muscle and like, I think ultimately like the really masculine practice of, of exercising in that way is really providing me something. And I noticed that I'm unwilling to let it go. It's starting to move past initially going to the gym was like a means to an end and a burden. And I'm relating to it these days really as a masculine practice. Like I want to put on muscle. Yes, because it. I look good and I like that. I like feeling like I look good. Who doesn't want to feel sexy in their own body? But also too, because I have a commitment to embodying the masculine energy. And part of the role of the masculine is to care for and provide and protect the feminine. And so there's something even on a symbolic level of holding myself physically fit and able and muscular and like embracing some of the danger of a, a man that can hold muscle on their frame that really... Um, symbolically, spiritually, whatever you want to call it, like actually is a deepening of me holding that pole in, in our relationship. So um, yeah, that's fascinating to me. Never in a million years did I expect that to happen. I was like, I'll go to the gym because I want to change this and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, as we like a lot of stuff, when we make a commitment and then start to take it on, sometimes you can change your relationship to it and discover something you never in a million years would have thought would have been there. Maria says that you have hired a nutritionist and do CrossFit on a regular basis. You're tired of feeling tired. Yeah, that's a good one, right? It's like, we just get to the point where we're like enough. We have to get to that point. It takes a long time. And uh, I feel great. I have muscle, but those freaking abs are hard to get. <laughs> great speech. <laughs> I guess I am giving a speech. I'm not intending to give a speech. I, someone that I followed for a while, I really wanted to coach him. He was a, a content creator for a video game I played called Hearthstone. Brilliant guy, fellow lawyer, loved him. And he was also a former trainer. And someone had written in on a live show they were doing and said, like, hey, how do you get abs? How do you get six-pack abs? And he said, um, abs are made in the kitchen. It's really your abs are a function of what you eat, much more so than any exercise that you do or don't do. Yeah, we have to exercise our core. And yeah, that's important. But it really comes down to what you eat. And um, that's a level of discipline because changing the way we eat is at first counterintuitive. And second, it's like letting go of probably one of the most basic ways of numbing and, or pleasing ourselves, stimulating ourselves. And, uh, it can be a real challenge to let go of that. You know, like we are as humans, I find we tend to be much more willing to bolt something else on. We'll go to the gym. We'll start jogging. But, oh, I don't want to have to give that thing up. Why do I have to give up what I love? Why do I have to give up milk, cheese, whatever it is you want? 
Uh, Cami, uh, you just made sense to me. Well, finally, it took a while for me to get there, didn't it? <laughs> this is the area that my know-it-all has been unwilling to be supported in service of my bigger commitment and walk the talk of commitment. Thanks. Thanks for saying that, Cami. It's, it's um, one of the things I'm really present to is our the courage that it requires of us to be vulnerable and to be willing to put ourselves out there and um, and to let go of knowing it, of knowing the answer. Maria, congratulations, that's a significant drop. So let me tell you guys about our guest today, our wonderful Rishikal guest and how we know each other and then I'm gonna bring her on. Um, Stacy and I have known each other longer than most of the guests that we have had. Um, and the way we originally met was uh, because I was teaching funk styles. I was teaching popping, locking, waving, all that stuff locally here in Victoria at a, a dance studio called Vibe Street Dance. The way that I um, began teaching there was that I'd been looking forever for a place to learn funk styles. V Vancouver, just across the water, which is where near where Stacy lives these days, has an amazing popping culture, popping being the style of dance. Um, one of the best ones in Canada and like really incredible in this, like even relative to the States. We have really strong culture across the water. But this was a time when there was just nothing in Victoria, nothing. You could go do hip hop dancing, but there was no popping. And I reached out to this woman. I went and took a hip hop class, but it wasn't what I wanted. I really wanted to learn popping more, more. And um, randomly, I reached out back to Brooke, who owned the studio, and said, hey, do you have anything new there? I'm, st I'm still looking. And what do you know? She just found a guy to come in and teach. And I was like, oh, my God, it's so cool. And this guy was really funky and um, not such a great teacher, really got skills, but not such a great teacher and a little bit flaky. And what happened was I would go to his classes and I would get so excited being there that I was, and I would write these long blog posts detailing like what we learned and how it was and trying to share this with people. And I'd send them to Brooke because I was excited. I was like, oh my God, it's so cool. I love this. And this guy just left. He fucked off <laughs> partway through. And uh, Brooke said, hey, Adam, really don't know if you're up for this, but like we lost our guy. He's just walked on. And I am thinking maybe you'd be willing to step in, which was incredible and terrifying. And, you know, one of those moments where destiny kind of calls you. And so I did. Um, at this point, I had very little experience teaching or even being trained in dance. And um, I started working with it and learning. And then I went and trained in Vancouver and came back. And this was around the point where Stacy started showing up to my classes. And um, Stacy was a badass. She was, she loved, like she took the technique. She learned the, she was down to learn. Um, and there's, especially in a style of dance, like funk styles, popping, locking, whatever, where there's, it looks, it's like magic. It looks incredible. And getting to that place where it looks incredible can feel really boring. You know, you're sitting there practicing this, which is not that sexy. And so as a teacher of these styles, you, you learn, you start to feel into people and you're like, this person's going to make it, or this person's going to really start to embody some of this stuff. This person just wants it to look cool and doesn't really want to have to work for it. And Stacy was one of the former people. She was someone I was like, oh, this girl gets it. This girl's down to, to play. And so from there, we just kind of kept in touch. She drifted on, moved on with her life. I moved on with mine and went back to law school. And we'd sort of bump into each other on social medias now and then. And out of the blue almost came a point where I was now training coaches and I started my own coaching practice and I was leading coach training for this company called Accomplishment Coaching. And I was asking myself, who are the people that I think would really take to this work? Who are the people that would show up and like this? And uh, hey, Dale, hey, Christina. And um, one of the people that came to mind was Stacy. And so I reached out to her and I had no idea where she was at. And um, I think this is the point where we'll bring her on. And so Stacy, get your video on, get your mic on. And I just want, I kind of want to have her share how it was from there. It's kind of like coming out on a talk show. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, it's happening. I'm waiting in the, in the wings. So share at least a little bit from your side, like how that was when I first reached out to you and, and sort of what progressed yeah. from there. 
and like before I say that, I didn't actually know that about your teaching experience. I came into the class thinking that you were like super experienced. You knew exactly how to do this. <laughs> yeah. So like that was actually really interesting to hear that just based on my perception, right? Yeah. So fun. I miss it was dance. terrifying. I Me miss too. Dance. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I've actually, yeah. I've played with the idea of, of like reaching back out. I mean, like, hey, could I do like a four class little thing? Because it's still there, you know, but anyhow. Do it. Do it. Yeah. It just, just through this conversation, I was reminded how much I miss dance. Uh, but when you reached out to me, I was just actually reflecting on that. I was, I was actually in a really interesting space. Like, and I was living with my boyfriend at the time we were sharing like a twin size bed in like an eight by eight foot bedroom. Like it was, my <laughs> life felt very, you know, small at the time. And, um, and I remember actually when you reached out, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be kind of like motivational or like, like kind of like what I think some of our perceptions are of coaching, you know, yes. generally is like, oh, I'm going to get like a pep talk and it's going to be inspired. like inspired. Yeah. Like I'm going into the, you know, into the game. Um, but it was, it wasn't that actually at all. And, uh, it was, you know, it was motivational, but it was also really, I think devastating because there was a lot of honesty and there was a lot of, oh yeah, right. Like my life is really small and I'm settling and tolerating a lot of things at that time. And, you know, I think I knew, and I think we all know on some level that there's like something, something there, there's a spark there. Yes. And I don't remember exactly what we talked about in that conversation, but I do remember how I felt when I left and I was really like, oh, just so much possibility. And yeah, I remember that was a really, that was actually a really pivotal moment for me. It was because I think I was willing to actually like look at what was there, which was uh -huh. really cool. Yeah. So cool. Cause it wasn't like. I had this, well, I guess we could say it was divinely inspired. I just like, who are the people for me to reach out to like who brainstorm and then reach out. And there's probably like 50 other people that I reached out to that were like, Nope, fuck off. <laughs> in oh. fact, I had a few friends from like law who were like, I'm really happy you like your profession and I'm not interested in it in that right. way that a lawyer can like put their hand on your face and like push <laughs> you down to the ground, which is fine. Right. But, um, so it's, I love that. I love our origin story because mm -hmm. so much has grown from that. And, you know, yeah. I, we'll talk a little bit about what you're up to on the backside of this and how people can get to know more about your work. But like, you've just created so much from where we, where we kind of both humbly began. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that I would have landed in that coach training if it hadn't have been for that initial conversation. Cause you, you opened up something where you were like, Hey, this is something that I think you'd really enjoy. I think you'd be really good at this. And we explored it. And I was like, well, yeah, I love, I love that work. And I think I'd been kind of like poking around at it for a while. And I think yeah. like there was a part of me that really wanted that, but didn't know what that looked like. Yes. You know? Yeah. Cause coaching fairly, was fairly new. I think it is still fairly new, you know, yeah. in, in the way that, that you do it and the trainings that we did, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I guess we should do <laughs> some of it then. Let's do it. I'm going to clear the tickle out of my throat. <laughs> With your, uh, your mug that says I am a fucking ray of sunshine or it a is. ray of fucking sunshine. Yeah. Makes me feel quite spunky when I drink out of this one. Let's have a spunky drink together. A spunky sip. Peak tea moment yet? Mm, we're there. It's peak tea moment. Good callback. It's been a while since we've had a peak tea moment. That was it yeah, right that, there. That was, my, that was my favorite part of your tea times. <laughs> Oh, it's peak team <laughs> I get that. Yeah. Okay. So, well, where should we dive in together? Yeah, I was, I was sitting with that. Um, and it's hilarious that I actually, when you sent me, there was like a little questionnaire before we got on here and I very like just unknowingly, but maybe knowingly jumped over the question about the coaching request. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> and then your assistant messaged me. She's like, Hey, yeah, I love it. You included everything except this. I'm like, ah. Oh. That's, that's very, Except the most important, yeah. thing. <laughs> the pivotal that would be thing I would do. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I think like there's a couple of directions that I could go. Like there's two pieces that are really prevalent for me right now. And so I'm just going to trust like what's here. Mm -hmm. I feel like, um, especially in the time that we're in, in the world right now, I, I literally, and this has been happening for me for a little while. I feel like I saw this coming. I feel like there was a lot of moments. I feel like 2019 was kind of like a purification for me. Like I went through like so many dark nights of the soul and just coming out the other end and trusting myself and going on a lot of journeys and um, really like moving through a lot of my own kind of limitations and beliefs about myself. 
And so I came into 2020 feeling very different, like very different, (laughs) Uh, very much more connected, I think, and much more available, which was really cool. Um, And when, when all this started to happen, where I started to see like, oh, okay, this is legit. Like people are actually going to really go through some, some big um, upheavals and realizations and being that I've worked in the digital space for a long time. And like, I really, I've, I've come to realize that my work is really in supporting people to bring their work to the world and bring their work online and how to get all of the technology and all that stuff out of the way so they can just do their work, you know? And, and so I, I started to have this realization in the past few weeks, and I think it's been emerging for a long time in that I have a lot to say, and I've, and mm-hmm. I've known that for a long time. And I often will exercise that, you know, that mouth of mine in, in saying those things. But I think that there's a part of me and, and over my journey of like, just becoming more grounded and becoming more heart focused and like just being more peaceful in general with myself and just the way I relate to the world. I've, I've realized that the peacefulness I've kind of put into this category of don't upset anybody. Like don't, right. don't say anything that might, you know, ruffle feathers and stuff like that, which is really connected. Yeah, to- got a bit of a mid Atlantic accent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and that's really connected to like one of my main wounds in my life was really, you know, learning really young to not, uh, mm. not stand out, to not be yeah. seen, to not like, don't, don't be too much, you know? Yes. And, and so that I know that that's all connected, but I really feel like at the core of who I am, I'm very disruptive. I know that I can see things and see aspects of life and how we can do things very differently, but then I'm, I'm hitting up against this, like, ah, oh, but don't be too polarizing. Don't mm. be too um, intense or don't upset people. And I think like, I can teach this stuff all day long. Like I know that, that polarizing is, is such an important part of like, just, just speaking our truth. Like, I mean, naturally yes. we're not going to be able to please everybody. That's just, that's just the reality. But I think I'm undoing the next layer of that at the moment. Like I'm really ready to launch my YouTube channel. I really want to start creating more content and I'm like pulling away that last layer. And maybe there's many layers, I don't know, but um just connecting and, and starting to like let go of that peace and maybe redefine what being peaceful and being peace for the world is. Cause I think you can be peace and polarizing. So I know, I know this stuff logically. And of course. I, when I bump up against it, I'm like, Oh, I should just stay quiet. I shouldn't, I shouldn't make that video. That's not a good idea. <laughs> you know? So that's kind yes, of, that's all up in my space at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Thanks for that very full uh, yes, description of all of that. It's super rich. <laughs> so, okay. So let me make sure I've got it. There's kind of like a tension or a conflict between yeah. love, peace, peace feels really great. And yet you can either have that experience. Is it an internal experience or like the world out there is at peace or both? Ooh. I think. Well, what I got when you said that was like an internal experience, because I know that the world, there's a lot of things that are not peaceful. Uh, Yeah, I think it's like, um, well, I just like when you said that too, I just realized like, wow, I'm putting a lot of significance on me. Like if I'm showing up and ruffling some feathers that I could somehow create this like massive ripple. Uh, Mm. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I think it's more internalized. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So kind of like I can have the experience of peace mm-hmm. or I can make the impact of the waves, whatever, be disruptive, but not both. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So is there like a particular place where you're like, I hear you say you're unraveling this, pulling this apart. Is there a particular mm-hmm. place where we could take a look at how the dynamic plays out? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, it shows up in a, in a couple different ways. Like definitely, I think on the like, you know, just generalized daily level, I think there's things like ideas that I have, or I would say particularly in like speaking up out outwardly into like a lot of my work is online. I think all of a lot of our, all of our work is probably online at the moment. Um, For everyone at this point. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think like, you know, I've been kind of hiding out quite a bit. And, and I, let me reframe that a little bit too, because I don't, I don't necessarily think that I've been hiding out because I think it's been empowered and I did choose it, but there is a part of me and this has come up a lot over the past six months of like wanting to create, like knowing that I have these, these things, but then being like, uh, I don't want to even want to 
deal with that. Mm. So I'd say like work like around my work and um, saying the things, creating the things. Um, yeah. What are the things? Well, definitely my YouTube channel. And I think there's part of that resistance is so big because I know I can feel it in me. And a lot of the things that I've, that I've planned on creating <laughs> are very, um, you know, are, are a bit disruptive and, and definitely will, you know, are aimed towards like edu education and like shifting perspectives and stuff. And I think yeah. I know that it's going to be a little bit intense. And, and I think that that's like why the resistance is maybe so high. But I'm wondering, like, so that what you just shared with me, which is totally fine, was kind of like talking about the things like, mm. oh, well, I want to launch my YouTube channel. But what is it you want to say? Like, tell me the things. Right, right. Um, I guess disrupt me. Disrupt, <laughs> disrupt. OK, cool. OK, let's play. Um, well, definitely there's so uh, there's a video that I so I really feel called to create some short short video short films and mm -hmm. there's one specifically about um, sex work and around women who uh, work in sex work that i feel really called to create and uh, i've had my own experiences there and and had a lot of my own disempowered experiences with that and seen a lot of the the inner workings of how that goes for people yeah. and so i want to create something that that is um, essentially like showing how a woman ends up there and mm. And not to say every woman, of course, but I think like how many women end up there and sort of the loop that plays out. Um, uh -huh. And and some of the kind of like, I'd say like a behind the scenes without getting too graphic, but a kind of behind the scenes, but doing it very, I'm still talking about the thing. I'm still talking mm. about the thing. Nice catch. Um, yeah. Let me speak to everyone while you just sit with that for a yeah. sec. So yeah. like, this is what, for everyone listening, watching this, is what we all do, this is not a, flaw in Stacy is that we get, you've heard me talk about this before, we get up in the stands and we talk about the thing that's happening rather than yeah. being on the court of our life, sharing it. And of course we would do that because then it's, you can probably feel Stacy's edge just in like saying the thing right now. And mm -hmm. so it's easier for us to talk about saying the thing and how we want to help me figure out how to say the thing rather than like, well, let's start with what is the thing and then work mm -hmm. there. Yeah. What I'm getting is, uh, it, and and this is this is interesting because I, I think I'm not allowing myself to go there often and that's why it's like it's feeling a little bit kind of like crunchy getting there. Mm -hmm. uh, Can I reflect something too? Yeah, yeah. I notice your speaking is quick. Mm. And I wonder if that's connected. Probably. Yeah, <laughs> probably. I mean, I think it's like a um, like I know that there's a performance piece, like I do this a lot, like get on, you know, chats or podcasts and things like that. And so there's like a part of me that can, and this, this is actually the part of me that I struggle to create from because it's not there. There's like a, an inauthenticity or a lack of a letting myself kind of go there. Mm. Um, Cause I think part of what I'm, part of what I'm creating is very like intuitive and also like um comes comes through in the moment if there's something that i see or kind of get a get a sense of you know and if yeah. i'm not letting myself drop into that place it's like then i can't say the thing you know or, or it just might float on by kind of thing um because right. i've had some awarenesses in the past couple of weeks of things like around even just how we do this like online thing you know there's a lot i i look a lot at the um the way that we invite people into like the online space to share their message. And uh, I really, I really feel like part of my, part of my message is like that we do get to be ourselves. So it's kind of hilarious that this is what, you know, I'm obviously in at the moment. Um, like to kind of cut the shit in a way, you know, mm. what would that look like in this moment? Um, I think just just being here, like just just sharing what's what what is here, <laughs> like um, not trying to get it right or you know whatever. Uh, which is which is a new space for me. I will say, you know, I think because of the way that I've sort of gone through life, I've always had the 
you know, I know, I know what this is going to look like and kind of thinking ahead. And I think a lot of people who've experienced trauma tend to have that approach, like kind of being a couple steps ahead to kind of maybe not even if they've had trauma, I think it's a human thing. Um, I think dropping the shit would just be like, and this is what I think I crave actually, as I'm saying, this is like that, that it's not creating content. It's actually, it's just creating from in the moment. Mm. So it's not so plotted and planned out. It's actually like, like the phone is the microphone and we're just walking through life, sharing our experience a little bit more like that than like, Oh, what kind of content should I like that kind of very organized, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Having shared that, mm-hmm. what's present for you in this moment? There's some emotions there. Like there's some, uh, It's like, um, it's a feeling of, uh, um, like there's some forgiveness there as well. Like I get that there's this part of like, there's sadness, there's some forgiveness of like, ah, and that feels very collective. Like it doesn't just feel like mine. I'm like, oh fuck. I'm so sorry that like, we believed the lie (laughs) that we had to be something else or like that we had to be fit into this like box of what a human should be. There's actually quite a bit of emotion there. Like, um, would you do me a favor? Yeah. Would you pause and just breathe into it? Yeah. Thanks. <sighs> yeah. And this is really connected to the <laughs> to the feeling that I'm in quite consistently that mm-hmm. I'm like kind of keeping lower down because this is the, that, that's that disruption of like, oh, there's like a, the illusion, you know, that I'm really aware of. And uh, there's a part of me that wants to play that game, you know, and like, oh, we'll just be an influencer and create within the same context of that. Yeah. And um, there's another part of me that's like, no, fuck that. You know, I think that all of us are kind of getting to this point of like, something is off. <laughs> And I think a lot of us are seeing that social media can be really damaging and can be very um, influencing these behaviors and these thoughts about ourselves that, that aren't true, you know, and, and just feeding down the line of what we've, you know, especially I think, I think men too, but women, we've had this like idea of what we should look like, what we should sound like, what life is supposed to look like, what family is supposed to look like, all of these things. And, um, yeah, I really, uh, oh, I'm like scared. I'm scared. Mm-hmm. I can feel that fear of like coming forward and disrupting that and, and challenging that. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of fear there. Um, and if I like feel into it, it's not like a, it's not a fear that. Hmm. Nice. I like what just happened there. Yeah. It's not a fear that something's going to happen. It's actually a, it's like a, um, oh, it's like a fear that if I don't say it, that, or if I don't show up as who I know I am, that it will eat me alive. (laughs) Like literally like that feeling of like the death of a thousand paper cuts of like not, not being who you know you are and like consistently that's actually the fear. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me see if I've got it. So, well, the first thing I'm hearing is in this moment, what you're present to is fear. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of editorializing on top of that, (laughs) not to make it wrong. Right. I do the same thing. And, um, and then I'm hearing that part of the fear is like, if I don't do this now, I will be destroyed. I will be, it yeah. will consume me or kill me or cut me to pieces over and over and over. Yeah. Which would make sense then. Like it's, it occurs a little bit like from that fear, then what there is to do is to like, better fucking get started. Like yesterday. Yeah. Is that- <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, the like, um, 
the significance I think is what keeps me in that cycle of like, it's, it feels so big and there is so much fear that I get into the like, Ooh, mm. better wait till next week, <laughs> you know, right. That's really full on. Um, and, and like tons of ground taken. Like I know that there's a lot of things that I'm creating and like stepping into, like I get the timing of it. And, um, just in this conversation, I'm so present to, um, how much this isn't a strategy to create. This is actually like a, it's like a, a heart soul yearning of, mm. um, it's like that, that, you know, creating your art, you know, just letting that come through like, oof, yeah. It makes sense that that would be scary. It makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense to me too. You know, when I see it in other people, it's so clear, you know, and, and I feel like I can support others with this. And I know that that's the human dilemma. Right. Yes. But it's like, in me, it's this such a, um, it's so visceral. It's different than when we just look at someone else and kind of can see the things, you know? Um, yeah. Mm. Just resting in that. I feel like, I'm at, like, I almost like there's nothing else to say. I'm like, oh, so that's what there is to do. <laughs> huh. Well, that's an interesting statement, even that there's something to do. Yeah. And I know that that's how I tend to relate to it. Like, and that's what I get like exhausted just thinking about it. Oh, now I got to go and do all this stuff. Right. Yeah. So what? What do you, it's kind of like, there's this thing that you want to do that's scary two ways. One, it's scary to share. And the other is it's scary not to share. Mm -hmm. Kind of like damned yeah. if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. And so one of the approaches with the fear is to like rush off and do it because it's scary not to share mm -hmm. or get in like, I mean, I get the speaking picks up, your energy gets really fast. I'm curious, like, does that manifest in your actions and, and what you create? <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh -huh. Yeah, totally. What I mean, does that I look like? it, it looks, and even when I get kind of like, this can show up quite often, like I'll go into the overworking or like, yeah. like picking up the pace. Um, I use humor a lot, uh, deflection kind of things. And even now I'm like, okay, if I was to go and turn on my camera and just start filming, it's like, that would be there. Like the sort of, um, <laughs> you know, right. yeah. Even on right. my podcast, I notice it and I'm not, I'm not making it wrong. Like I get that it's like a part of it, but it's, it does, it shows up. It's like this sort of, um, tick, 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 uh, better get it out. Um, mm. yeah. yeah. What? I mean, I imagine you could create quite a bit from that place where it's like the, the stuff that gets made, you could, you could make a lot from that. Uh, I got to get it all done. And, and probably in a way that would wow a lot of people where they're like, holy crap, how did Stacy make an entire course and seven weeks of podcast and 13 clients and whatever else she's created in two days? That's insane. Mm -hmm. But then I'm guessing there is also like an underlying or overlying impact to this? Like, so how does that, what's the cost of this? Mm. Yeah. I'm having a hard time accessing it. And I think I'm, I'm bumping up against like, the, I'm not doing enough. Like mm. I'm bumping up against that, like, oh, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing all of that. So like, or tons of stuff. So I'm almost in this, like a little bit of, um, resistance to answer you. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's not like we're on the other side of this equation, so yeah. to speak, where it's like, ah, but it's going to kill me if I don't do it and I'm not doing it sufficient, yes. whatever that is. Yeah. And so then you're, as soon as I ask like, well, what's the cost? It's like, I can't think about the cost because I have to do it. Yeah. Is that yeah, kind of right? Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Well, so tell me how that goes. Yeah. It's, um, it's a lot of like pushing off, like 
into the distance this like and and you know like i've i've created a like i'm holding tight is basically my experience of it and you know like my coach is amazing at at pointing to it and 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 we've created a lot of stuff around it and i'm like yeah 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 like <laughs> you know so um it kind of goes like that truthfully a lot of planning a lot of um you know kind of sort of creating it mm. it's it my experience is like i'm dragging myself um, you know, like out of the room, like into the art room, you know, like yes. it's time to create, even though, yeah. you, even though I want to, I'm still yep. like, Ooh, <laughs> I will fight. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, thanks for sharing that. That makes so much sense. So there's, well, let me, let me just speak to everyone first for a sec. Yeah. So what just happened there was. Stacy had like resistance to looking in a certain direction. And when that's ultimately what we would call trusting the client, like, because it's not for me to impose a direction for us to look at. It's for basically Stacy to, to guide us through this and me just to kind of be shoulder to shoulder with her. So when she's got resistance to going one way, we honor that and look in whatever got it. So don't want to look that way. What, what way should we look? How does this go? Let's go with what is showing up for you. So kind of it's like you get it done but then it's like dragging yourself through mud yeah and then on the other side or even during the creation i'll yeah. be so stoked loving life you know yeah. fully activated i'm like yes this is the best and then you know at the at the end i'm like feeling accomplished created i'm like yes this is so so juicy and like exactly what i want and i and i think i try to remind myself that i'm like oh it's so good so then i'll try to like keep that momentum uh -huh. and then inevitably i will you know hit some kind of wall or um whatever you know mm. kind of burn myself out trying to maintain the good moment you know right well what i'm hearing underneath all of this is that like it's a little bit like you're creating so as to ensure your fear is resolved or it doesn't come true or it doesn't happen it does actually, you know, that really, that really resonates. I think that there's a component of, of fear that still drives it. Like it doesn't feel like this natural expression and just, you know, like there's a control to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Hmm. What? Yeah. <laughs> just sitting with that because that's actually when I think about like I can and just feel that like I can feel what what it feels like to just be myself and create my art and I think there's a component of letting go and surrender and trust there uh it's not it's not controlled it's just because it, it is just who I am and I and I know that on a very deep level um like that's actually what I can feel is the truth is like, oh, it doesn't need to be controlled. And yet here I am <laughs> forcing it, drinking yeah. another espresso to make it happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whatever. Which you're yeah. pretty incredible at. Yeah. Like you can force something. And I don't even mean that um, forces in the sense of like will something into existence totally. beyond all barriers. You're pretty incredible at that. I am. Yeah. 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 So what is that? And maybe this will, will get bounced out of this. Maybe that part of you will be like, nope, still not going to look. But like from that place, from creating from that way of being, so to speak, what's the, what's the cost, the ultimate cost of all of this? Hmm. Wow. I just saw so many connections <laughs> all of a sudden. Um, I think well, what I sense is that the cost is, is my own peace, which is interesting. Mm. And also, uh, I think the cost is actually like the thing that I want, which is to connect with people and share and, and also be an example of that, you know, cause like be the embodiment of that versus just talking about it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of trailing here. What's the doing cost? Great. Yeah, I keep wanting to say like joy, like joy, mm. 
like the joy of creating, you know, versus, and like, there's humor in all of it. I can see the like control and fixation and all that. Like, I'm like, yeah, I got it. I'm totally human. And like, yeah, I think that there's like a joy and a trust that I don't get to play in. And that's what I know I crave on a very deep level is like that, that depth and just being versus like it always having to be strategic, Uh huh. you know? Yes, I do. It's very relatable for me, what you're talking about. You know, like one of the things I find fascinating about our fear, first of all, is that we try to rationalize it, like to defeat yeah. it with rationality. So our fear is like, this is terrifying. We're like, I don't need to be afraid of that. Here's all the reasons why. Blah, blah, blah. And our fear is like, I don't care. I'm irrational. That yeah. is irrelevant. That doesn't impact me. It doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then what we do is we try to act in alignment with our fear. So if it's, if we're afraid that by not doing something, a safe will land on our head, we either do the thing or we invest in like some kind of hard hat thing. Like we let our fear be that which determines how we go out into the world and do stuff. Mm. Um, Yeah. Or, you know, I'm afraid that if I, it's kind of like you're in this camp, but I must. So it makes sense. It's almost like, you're creating stuff, but there's a bit of a tug of war. Like there can't be a piece. Yeah. Is that about how it kind of feels? It does. And I I realized a moment ago that there was kind of two uh, ideas of what I thought we might talk about. And they're actually exactly a a mirror of each other. So I just Mm -hmm. realized that too, where I was like, ah, there was this other component of like busy versus creation. And this feels very similar. It's like, am I forcing it? Or is it like, you know, from this place of fear and it's got to happen and, it, and blah, um, or just, just creating, like there's a, there is a difference, right. Um, you know, of like that. Yeah. It feels like it just really feels like trust to me when I think about creation versus, versus how it's been going. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good face. Yeah. Very yeah. good face. What, um, so what's the, what is it that the fear is trying to stop you from doing or protect you from doing or? Uh, I was just going to answer. And then I, I thought, you know, let me look at it again with fresh eyes. Cause I think that there is a little bit, something maybe else going on here. Um, mm. I think the fear is stopping me from I think that there's like a couple pieces here. The first thing I was going to say is like from being like fully seen, because there's like some, you know, definitely some wounding around that. And then also like, that's just been my programming in a way, like don't, you know, don't be too big, don't be too loud. Um, So I think that that's kind of there, but I think there's also like a fear of, of success, you know, like a fear of, um, and that's like kind of generalized, but I mean, like, so, so great. So I create this, I show up, I I do these things, I support people in this way. And then there's this element of like, Oh, that's a lot of responsibility. I am not, you know, God, I don't know everything. I don't, you know, like I get into that kind of (laughs) conversation of like, Ooh, who am I to do that? That's like, that's, you know, so I think that there is a little bit of that going on. And I, and, and I've been undoing a lot of that because like, you know, it's just, I feel like that's been my work too, is like, cool. And when you have a lot of responsibility, you'll navigate that then, and you'll continue to do your work then. And, you know, like I, I get it. And yeah. I think, I think that there is maybe some of that on a, a little bit too, like, cool. So then you've got this platform and you've got these people listening and now, now what? So that's the part of the fear that has you not pull back yeah or or not push forward or what yeah has you pull back yeah and then there's another part of your fear that we've kind of that's been present which is like but i have to like and do it really quick right now yeah and what's what's that part sort of trying to keep you from doing or prevent from happening the quick one Mm -hmm. yeah well the quick the quickness is the solution to the fear yeah right yeah, that, that one, it's like a, yeah, I, I'm loving this. So we're pulling it all out in the open here. It's the <laughs> it's, evaluation. Yes. It's the, uh, yeah, it's the like, don't die with your song inside of you. It's like that, 
Like, uh, you know, this is who you are. Like, like the fear of, um, uh, Ooh, this is juicy. It's like, you know, like, you know, all this stuff don't, don't like, um, it, it feels kind of connected to like, um, pride and, and others like, you know, fucking get it done, Stacy. Like, you know, people are, people know you, people do this. Come on. Let's like, don't, don't look bad. <laughs> like, uh -huh. like that kind of, yeah. yeah. So you've got, out loud. you've got kind of, you say that again, sorry. Mm -hmm. I just said, that's fun to say aloud. <laughs> What's that? Say it again. So like, so like, oh, just don't look bad. Come on. <laughs> right. That's yeah. obvious. That's yeah. rule number one. Yeah. <laughs> so there's kind of like, it sounds like two problems coexisting. One is uh, it's wrong, bad, dangerous, for whatever reason, to be fully seen, to be successful, mm -hmm. which you could probably lump in there, to be who you are. Yeah. And then co-occurring is that you're going to die with your song inside of you. Yeah. Uh-huh. How do you solve this impossible dilemma? <laughs> right? <sighs> well, I know that swinging, swinging between the two has been kind of my MO, like just okay. kind of, or like, like kind of thrusting it on one side and being like, okay, you're going to just do all of the things. Yeah. Um, has been very ineffective, I will say. Like it's been, you know, it's been helpful in that it's like forced me to get out there and create things, and and I think that that it's worked on some level. But it it yeah. creates this sort of um, stop and go kind of experience. So I feel like there's like a, um, like, and like what I'm getting is like there's also like a gentleness. It doesn't have to be so forceful. So maybe it is just, um, like it feels like like steps versus. Yeah. Well, but hold on, because now we're into dangerous territory. So I'm going to talk to everyone yeah. else. So <laughs> Stacey's starting to get into, oh, I think I know what the thing is, yeah. which is like, oh, here's the solution. And yeah. one of the things is we we can't leave a place till we've been there. And as humans, we don't want to be there. <laughs> Wherever yeah. we are right now is wrong. We're tired of being there already. Let's move on. Yeah. And what we're kind of doing here is really taking a look at like this, because I know or I trust at least that Stacy has created a brilliant solution to the impossibility of these two, the rock and the hard place in which she finds herself. And that's what I really want to look at is so that Stacy can start to see this getting created in her life moment by moment, because we can't choose something. What we're actively trying to do is like, what's the solution? But if we find ourselves in a hole and we believe the solution is to get a ladder, that's only going to work until we realize, oh, the real problem is I keep finding holes and falling into them. Huh. Right. No amount of ladders is ever going to help me get out of that. It just help me do it faster. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, like you shared, and you're doing great, by the way. So I want to be clear. Anything I say to these people is not like a, you're doing it wrong. You're doing perfect. Oh, yeah. Great, I, great yeah. work. I wasn't getting that. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could let me know, by the way, that I'm doing good too over here. You are doing nice. great. Okay, good. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, great. yeah you are. <laughs> Thank you. So um, <laughs> we've got this thing you said like, oh, one of the things where I'll try to work with this is like swing back and forth or like do all the things right now. Yeah. yeah. So in the do all the things right now, how does that allow you to stay safe from being fully seen? Like in what way does that problem still get resolved? Yeah. Um, hold on. Let me make sure mm -hmm. I'm understanding here. Like. So if I'm, yeah, if I'm doing that, then I get to, it's almost like I, I'm still hiding because I'm in the um, do, 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 do. It's kind of like out here. Like I can mm. produce out here and hide behind. Got it. Which is also how I do busyness. Like I'll just create a bunch of stuff and then I'll just right. be over here. You know, um, is that, is that my, this is what happens when we start getting close is my brain's like, Oh, wait a second. Abstract thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> that Did makes that total sense. Question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let me just reflect back what I heard you say, which yeah. is one, you got, so we're, I'll just lay some planks. So you've got an intractable problem. The problem is a, you can't let yourself be seen fully. Yeah. And B you're going to die with your song inside of you and it'll kill you, which are like in direct opposition to one another. Right. You did I did we cut out there? Did you hear that? I heard that. Yeah. 
Okay, great. So they're in like direct opposition to one another. And yet somehow you must, you must mm -hmm. solve this problem. And so I was asking like, well, what yeah, solutions yeah. have you created to do this? And one of them is, okay, I'll do all of the things which kind of solves the problem of I will die with my song inside of me. Yeah. But then we also know somehow in the way you're going to be, in the way you're going to show up to doing all the things, you're going to also solve the problem of being too much. You've got to make sure that that doesn't come true. Mm -hmm. And what I heard you say is like, you'll, you'll sort of do all of the stuff, but in such a way that you are still back and off the court and there's like a degree of separation or safety. Is that right? That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Any other sort of solutions to this intractable problem that you've that you can see in this moment that you've kind of created? Hmm. That was really accurate. Like when you laid it all out like that, I'm like, oh, that's exactly how it goes. Um, nice work. You that was I'm just saying what the smart person on this conversation said. <laughs> I'm, I, I can see that there's like little things that I do, like um, that are maybe a little bit less conscious, but I think I like well being tends to be a way that I sort of I'm like, oh, I'm just not feeling well. So then I'll just, I'll have to start next week or I'll mm. have to push it out or, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Got let your well being slide kind of. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. I think that's the kind of mainly how it goes. What do you, um, what do you do to kind of make sure that you, so let's kind of like take it the other direction. So like, how do you, what are some of the things you do to solve the problem of being too much, being fully seen? Like that, that's bad. How do you solve that? Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely like the holding back, like just not really standing out, not having an opinion about certain things. Like, and this is, uh -huh. this is kind of connected to like my superpower is I can, I can really read people and I can kind of chameleon a little bit. Like I tend to be quite shift shape shifty. Yep. Uh, so I, I can, that one. I can fit in, you know, I can kind of not be too disruptive, you know? Yeah. Um, you're what people want you and need you to be. As exactly. opposed to yeah. what Stacy is. Yeah. Uh huh. Got it. And so, great. Okay. Love that. So, then how do you enact that? But then at the same time, attempt to solve the problem of I will die with my song inside of me and it'll kill me. Can you ask that one more time? Mm hmm. Yeah. And let me just, I'll put it all out there. So, now we're looking at like, oh, there's a problem of Stacy being fully seen, being who she is. So we've got to have a solution to that, which is mm -hmm. kind of hide, uh, hold back, withhold, be what is required by other people. Mm -hmm. Now, we also know that in doing that, you're also going to have to find a solution to the fact that you're going to die with your song inside of you. So how does that strategy then kind of wrap up into solving this other thing? Yeah. Ooh. That is a great question. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, <laughs> this is what I just got, which is kind of funny is, so then I, I, it's almost like I gather information and I also, uh, I think this is, I think this is part of it actually, which is really hilarious. I, I kind of like, like, cause I teach a lot of this stuff. I teach people how to like get their work online and create these different components and understand their message and do these different things and all this stuff. So it's almost like I'm, I'm acting it out over here so that yeah. I, so that I can kind of get that fill of like, Oh, you know, get helping other people get their work out there. Uh -huh. So it's almost like I'm getting the hit of it, but it's not actually mine. Got it. Um, <laughs> sorry, my cat is letting me know that he wants to be let out of my office by scratching at my wall. So let me take care of that. There you <laughs> so go. Cute. This calls too intense for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Heading too close to home for Hermes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I love this. So it sounds yeah. like part of the way it goes is you'll be what other people need you to be. Right. Withhold some of who you are. And then the way you ensure that you're not going to let your song die inside of you, though, is by teaching and providing it to other people. So you're like, here's how you do it. So at least like you get a hit, you're kind of adjacent yeah. to the path that's truly yours. 
but at least you're kind of like in the conversation a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. That, that's a very, very intelligent strategy. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. 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 And can you like, wow. with yeah. utter love and reverence for yourself, can you see that yeah. actually this is brilliant? Like imagine a girl, a young girl who's given this impossible problem, this dilemma in her life mm -hmm. that like, here's the problem. You're going to die with your song. You, if you don't sing your song, it will kill you. Yeah. You're too much. Your song is too much. Off you go. Solve it. Yeah. And like here you've created these strategies that somehow allowed you to kind of navigate these two, in quotes, truths that you were given. Mm -hmm. There is utter brilliance to that, Stacey. Like I'm really present to like, wow, imagine like six, four-year-old, however you old where you were when you got this training, like creating that. It's like, wow, that's so brilliant to be able to put that together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Thanks. I, uh, I really can see <laughs> how it's very, like it, it's operational. It works in a way. Right. So that I can see why I've been sort of like, ah, well, next week, you know, cause I, I kind of got a good thing going on. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. I loved teaching dance because I didn't have to get into the circle and dance. Right. I got to be the one teaching you all the technique. Yeah. We never, I, maybe you remember this. We never did freestyle in my classes. Yeah. Because then I would have to get into a circle with you guys and not have the rhythm right and not do it the correct way. And, you know, there'd be a, there's a safety. I, I practiced moving past that, but like, I want to out myself in that. That was similar to what I'm hearing you talk about, you know, like, oh, I'll teach all of you and I can point to it. Yeah. And it almost feels good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I really get that. Yeah. And I relate to that. Yeah. I definitely had some like strong aversions to that was one of the reasons why I think I left dance was like, oh, I love dancing, love learning how to dance and don't want to be seen too much. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't want to totally. do that. Part. Yeah. 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 Which one of the things I want you to know, Stacey, is that that's hilarious. Yeah. Not hilarious. You're dumb. Hilarious. Just like cosmic joke hilarious that someone like you would not want to be seen too much makes total sense it's just yeah. you're such a radiant queen of a woman <laughs> that it would be like you know a supernova being like but yeah. look at over there at that brown dwarf look at jupiter yeah. isn't it cool <laughs> and i've had that reflected to me i have i'm sure i'm yeah, sure you have I've had that reflected to me before and and i almost like which I think I, I can sometimes take that and kind of like be like, oh, like it feeds into that, that fear of like dying with the song inside where I'm like, yeah, you're right. I yes. feel like I've got this, this like, I'm sitting on a gold mine of stuff that I want to like bring to the world and, and just share my heart with people really, you know? Yeah. And then, and I think that um, this doesn't feel as true now, but I think I definitely played into the like fairness, like, oh, like, why did I have that experience as a kid? Like that sucks. Right. <laughs> you know? Um, but it doesn't, that doesn't feel true now. I feel like quite, quite on the journey, you know, I'm like, man, that's cool that I got to that, to this point of like, oh, and I know that that's all part of the, like the breakthrough, the bigger experience for me is that, you know? So yes. yeah, yeah. It makes sense. What, um, what would you want someone in a similar position, similar experience? What would you want for them? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. I, I sorry about the ones before this. I'm working on getting them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I would want them to shine and to like, just just, um, I think there's, there's a part of like, like, uh, I just want to was to say, like, fall in love with, with themselves. Like, I think that there is a component of like, um, of self judgment that I'd that I'd want them to be free of, and maybe that mm. judgment's been imposed by others. Who knows? But just the just that um, that freedom and uh, yeah. Who would they get to be from that place? Yeah, yeah. It's I'm just getting some layers here, like 
they get, to, they get to be themselves. I mean, ultimately, and they, they get to be the, the fullest expression of who they are. So it's like a, um, which is always, you know, which is not finite. So it's like, they get to just keep exploring and, and bringing out and, um, yeah, it's exciting. And it's like, Ooh, like who knows what's going to come out of that, you know, with, with no limitation on what you can create, which is something I just am infatuated with in life is like, that's what art is to me. It's like, it's this, this unending, you know, like, Ooh, like provocative experience of stuff that's coming through. Like, you know, it's, it's, um, especially when we're not like copying each other, which is a total beef I have, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, when it's just like really allowing what's, what's emerging to come out, it's like, man, we have no idea. And art has been some of the most, oh, it's, it's, it's taught us so much. And I, I feel like that's the piece that I think that, that, that this person would get to be is like, like fully alive. Mm. Oof. Yeah. Fully, like fully there, fully alive. Wow. How I got all of that from that is really cool. <laughs> huh. hmm. I'm guessing that includes the parts that aren't shiny or pretty or beautiful art. Yeah. If that's even a qualifier yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious, what do you see there might be to take on from here? Yeah. There's those emotions again. I'm like, oh, that's mm. me. <laughs> that's me. What share the emo like what are the emotions that show up for you in the moment? There was it, it started with like that a little bit of sadness, but it and then I, I was tuning into it and it's actually like it's like happy tears, like like joy mm. and um yeah, there's like a, a real palpable um, spaciousness. Mm. Yeah. So joy, spaciousness with a little bit of sadness. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Totally lost the question that you asked. No idea what that was, but that's okay. <laughs> You're kind of answering it anyhow. I'll remind yeah. you, but so the question is like, well, first I'll just reflect what happened there, which was like, I asked you, what do you see there is to take on from here? And your answer. Back in now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can feel him back there. <laughs> I made a huge mistake. I want to be back. <laughs> yeah. um, so I asked the question, like, what do you see there is to take on from here? And then your answer was um, a little bit of sadness, joy, and spaciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jade. Uh, yeah, just, just the simplicity of that and the power of that really landed for me. Like, it's not this like, okay, now I've got to go and do all these things now. It's like, wow, what, what if it was from spaciousness, joy and, and, and a little bit of sadness, cause actually that's really present. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty special. How could you share that? Yeah. So just to be clear, you know, yeah. I hear you saying like, oh, I want to share from that place. Mm -hmm. I'm also asking like, I love that, like share from that place and kind of like share as that place. Yeah. And I get like all kinds of um, like visuals and, it, and like, oh, like that's totally possible. Like there's, it's not like a um, but it, it feels less strategic. So there isn't like a definitive, like, this is what, this is what it will look like. It's very um, experienced, um, which is where we started. It's like, it's like being, being myself. So how would I, how would I share that? It's, um, I think I'm not finding an answer because I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I think it would just be sharing it, you know, nice. like, yeah, it's, which is different. Usually I would have like, Oh, I could create a video about this, Adam. It would be about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really profound, Stacy. So like, sometimes yeah. I'd be like, great, let's create a practice and like, let's create a way to share it. But I also really get, you know, that can be a bit of a slippery slope for yeah. you. Yeah. And the idea of you, this is part of what your fear will tell us, right? There's no time to sit in that. There's no time for joy and sadness and spaciousness. Your song, 
And it's like, oh, but that is your song right now. Yeah. And before you can really share your song with other people, you have to be willing to stop and share, so to speak, with yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hearing what I'm hearing you say is like, oh, yeah. perhaps what there is to practice is to be with some sadness, to be with some joy, to be with some spaciousness for a while. Yeah. And to trust that that is my song. Yeah. Yeah. I felt that when you just shared that, it really landed for me. Mm. Yeah. Like almost like a, um, it was like a weight was lifted, but it was also like a, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you think you'd be up to just like, so this is the part where it, it can get a little slippery, but like mm. some structure can support us. Like, and maybe that structure is as simple as like, if you have a meditation practice, you bring this there. And if you don't, you set aside like 10 minutes before you go to bed or right when you wake up to like, just mm. be with, oh, what's, what is my song in this moment? Can I sit with that? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Definitely take that on. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just got something there. I was like, oh, I noticed that during this time of so much time, <laughs> I'm filling it with all these other things to take up time. And now I can just, ah, oh, like, what if that was um, my balcony is calling to me right now? Like, oh, I can go sit mm. out there. And yeah, because there is that, um, that, um, that those emotions are there. Like as soon as we landed on that here, it was like, Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Your um, energy in this moment is so much like one softer, but like just mm -hmm. um, there's more peace. There's what I'm present yeah. to in you. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Uh -huh. We got to peace. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Um, anything else that you see you'd want to like take on this week coming like from this place? Yeah, I'm like, I'm checking in that I'm not choosing things to like, I think right now I'm going to, I'm going to stick with this and I'm going to explore from there. Cause I actually feel like the, um, the drop in of this is what's going to have me authentically choose those things and be like, Hey, this is what I'm going to take on. Like not from, Hey, this is what I've been telling myself I should be doing, but like, this is what, what I actually desire to create. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I think from this, from this place, I'm going to choose some things to take on, um, whether that is hitting record on the camera or, or something else like that. That's yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I have one more for you. This is yeah. more of a noticing practice. So you may just notice getting brought, like getting pulled back in to the unwinnable game. Mm hmm. Mm hmm which that's like an unwinnable game is like spinning plates, you know, on yeah. those poles, they do that. It, it, Cause it's like you, that game, you never, you never get to the place where like all the plates have been spun and now right. it is done there. You have to keep them spinning. Mm -hmm. And so you can notice when that's happening and then just check in like, Oh, what is my song in this moment? Yeah. Yeah. I wrote that down. I really that. love that. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, I would like to finish by acknowledging you, but I want to check and see, is there anything else here for, um, you in this conversation for it to feel complete? No, I think I, it feels complete. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks so much, cool. Adam. Your uh -huh. Um, well, Stacy, I so acknowledge you for your, like, um, just the queen that I totally experience you as like your radiance, your grace, your incredible power to like magnetize and to create in the world and to inspire others to do that. There's a, um, there's a way you, you move through life. That is like, it will happen. I often get that feeling with you. And one of the things that's so inspiring about the journey you're on is if we were to, 
couch this in like masculine and feminine dynamics, I feel you moving a little bit away from like the masculine, like I'm going to make this happen into like the softness of the feminine. And really like, I feel you cultivating the trust in that part. Like, oh, what there is for me to do is to be with my song. It will come to me. Yeah. Um, thanks for the trust in this conversation. And um, thanks also for being hilarious. Like you're just, <laughs> you know, you and I got to go for dinner. Uh, we were talking about this before we started like six weeks ago. And I just, I love your sense of humor and your playfulness. And there's a way that you joke that you jump back and forth between the um, pretending something's very serious and then also being able to laugh at the cosmic joke of it. And it's just delicious. It's so great. <laughs> thanks Adam. You're welcome. Let's, um, so I want to read some of what people have shared, but yeah. let's do a bit of a debrief first, like anything you're present to or were surprised by or noticed throughout our conversation there. Yeah, I really noticed how, how so much of what was what we were speaking to and even what I wasn't sure about the two different kind of coaching requests, how connected it all was, like how mm. this has actually been at play quite a bit. And I wasn't, I wasn't so clear of the, the unwinnable game like that. I was like, oh, I thought it was very kind of, I don't know, I just got to like overcome this fear and go out there and just like do this thing. Like I actually kind of was believing that on some level, you know? Yes. So seeing oh, it, I know. Seeing it out like that, it's like, oh, wait a second. Yeah, that's that I can't, I, going in between those for the rest of my life is not going to be very joyful. You know, yeah. like there was a lot of awareness of the actual setup of it. Um, and also the brilliance of how I created that, you know, that was really it was really cool to see that. Um, and, and I get the, the reason and also the, the, the creation of that coming from like survival, you know, like, so I got these two things, what am I going to do with it? Um, yeah. Yeah. It, I'm, I'm always, um, odd when I let myself be like when I'm close hearted and frustrated, I'm like, dummies stop. <laughs> Can't you see that won't work? But like, if I can, you know, expand and open past yeah. that, I'm always awed by how brilliant we are, like how adapt the ability of humans to adapt, to play a game that we've been given. And everyone has that game that is like unwinnable. And it's just like, yeah. Oh my God, we're so it's, in a way a tragedy, but it's also just like, wow, that's epic that we created that. Yeah, yeah, epic yeah. is a good way to describe it. Yeah. 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 One thing that was there for me, especially early on was I was present to your speed and yeah. uh, present to my fear about it. Not that I was like, Oh, how, what do I like? What is there for me to do? Do I let that go? Do I need to speak to that? I don't know why I would other than to point to it at this point. Yeah. And, um, you know, there is a, a bit of me, one, trusting you and your process and two, trusting me to mm -hmm. like, okay, I feel it. I don't have to jump on, like, kind of like we're talking about, you know, like yeah. you have that fear show up and then we were like, I must act now, yeah. which is there a little <laughs> bit for me where it's like, oh, we're going quick. I must do something. And like, no, you don't, Adam, just sit in this and feel a little afraid yeah, for a while and, cool. you know, choose the trust. So it's neat how it's all, it's like fractal. Yes. What is above yeah. is as is below. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. I had, yeah. I didn't know, obviously. And <laughs> I also didn't know that I did that. So like, I, I think I have a story that my brain processes information really quickly. It probably does. It, and I think some of it is definitely like a, a fear thing. It tends to show up when I get into that, into that kind of uh, back and forth. Yes. So it was a cool, yeah, it was a cool drop in. Yeah. And that's the nature of our fear too, right? Is our strategies are born out of our gifts. So it's like, mm. and I, I see this a lot whenever we point to something it, like anywhere, people are like, oh yeah, but that's because, and it's like, you're right. And doing anything from fear tends to beget us more fear or the expression of trying to resolve fear as opposed to like the expression of our truest, deepest self and all of that stuff. Yeah. I'm going to read some of these, uh, comments that we got here. Cool. So um, Carly Greenhill up in the mix came on what? initially and just said this in all capital letters. So that's a good, <laughs> that's always good for us. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Jess says, this is amazing. Just so timely. So thanks for mm. really as an acknowledgement of you, Stacy, thanks for being open to be open to express and explore this. Cause you know, I really believe 
And these conversations, we're not just doing it for ourselves. Yeah. We're doing it for each other. First of all, I always get something from these and then we're doing it for the collective. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Carly said, I feel like my brain can be so dumb. Mine too. Me too. Not me. I'm smart, but my brain is dumb. <laughs> Every 12 hours I have to try and reason with it. Brain, we talked about this. You like making art, doing yoga, reading, please yeah. don't resist this. And my brain always forgets resist. And I have to do the kicking and screaming process all over again in order to do the thing. <laughs> I relate. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. I I'm present to how, um, art, like the expression of art or the creation of art is really an ongoing continual practice of choosing past our judgment. Yes. Oh, I love that, Adam. Yes. Uh -huh. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Heather says, I love this. You're going to die with this still in you. Super relatable. I get that too. Um, Carly, oh my God, this is so close to home. Produce, produce, produce and stay busy. Great. I look great. And no one is the wiser, aka I'm not mm -hmm. fully seen. Mm. Um, you and I share that too. I used mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you ever had this version, but like I would go to networking events and be, ex I'd hate every single human being by the time I was done and I'd be exhausted because I was just on working so hard to be what this person required, the chameleon yeah. and, and never sharing any like resisting connection at the same time. And, yeah. oh, brutal. Yeah, I relate to that exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. totally. Yeah. But you're so good at networking, Adam. Yeah, I know, but I just hate my fellow man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good at it because I know how to be what they want me to be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Carly says, great work, Stacey. So relatable and honest. Joy, a dash of sadness and spaciousness. Um, Jess sharing, I love this. What is my song in this moment? Actually yeah. allowing for being with what it is. Yeah. Um, and Heather just said, I'm experiencing Stacy's presence is so much lighter. Her speech is slower too. So nice work. Cool. Really great. And then to finish up, uh, Evan says, love, love, love this. Uh, I added an extra love. He just said, love, love, but I, I feel a third love from him. Nice. nice. Love, love, love this on both ends. Stacy, thanks for playing and being so yourself. I so relate to the don't be too much, stay invisible and wanting my song to be heard. Although, so, although my song doesn't seem super clear. That's beautiful, right? Like, yeah. great. That's your song. Your song is not super clear. Yeah. That is the thing to share. I will so take cool. asking myself, what's my song in the moment as a practice? Oh, so cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for um, hanging out. Uh, I'm going to wind us down. So, Stacy, thanks so much for, for being here. Um, what tell, like, you're a coach and quite a, a profound one, in my opinion. So, like, what are you up to? What people should people know about you and where do they find you? Yeah. So I had a, thanks Adam. I had a, mm -hmm. a kind of segue, a pivot happen actually mid last year where I recognized that every single person I was working with and being that I'd been an entrepreneur for like 10, over 10 years and really just always been in this space of creating every single client I was working with was in a similar conversation. And I don't know if that ever happens to you or like, it's all Only like always signs or, or like, you know, being reflected so clearly that like, you're supposed to be talking about this thing. Like this is the yes. thing. And ev all of my clients were entrepreneurs and women who were in business in some capacity, but they were being stopped by technology and they didn't know how to like get their work in, how to clarify their brand, how to create, how to get online. And that was devastating to me because I was watching their art not be in the world. So I'm uh -huh. like, oh, let me, you know. So anyways, I, I pivoted into doing some really powerful and what I feel like is really sacred branding work. So mm. it, as an entrepreneur, I know that when we interact with like media agencies or branding agencies, sometimes it's a little bit flat. It's like, yes. you know, Hey, let me create the strategy for what your brand is. And what I really pivoted into doing was working with people to actually translate their soul work. So who are they really? And how can we visually display that? How can we create an online experience that really walks their people through their, their gifts. And so that's really mm. been the past eight months or so has been me building this media agency. And there is a coaching component because there has to be right. You know, we're bringing, we're literally bringing your work out into the world. So there is a component of like resistance and fear and our, all of the yeah. things that we were even talking about in this conversation. Right. So it's, it's really beautiful. It's something I'm just, I've fallen in love with over and over again is really supporting people in that way. And so it's been um, kind of the deliverable, like artistic piece where we get to actually create. And then also the, the leadership and like actually yeah. being able to step into, Hey, my soul work is really needed in the world. And that is what 
what I'm up to, you know? So really supporting. Cool. Mostly I work with female entrepreneurs in that. Um, I've, you know, I've worked with a couple, a couple of males, which I love doing that work too. Um, so that's been really exciting. My company's called Your Media. We're doing some pretty cool stuff in the what, company. Say that again slower. What is it? It's called Your Media. Y-O-O-R. Your Media. Y-O-O. Your Media. Your Media. Yeah. So we're going to be doing some really cool stuff. Um, we do like podcast production and websites and branding and all that good stuff. And then, um, and then I'm, I'm doing a, a relaunch of my podcast at the moment. So lady talk radio, which I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm really pushing the edges with that. And from nice. this conversation, I'm, I, I'm seeing how there's like a giving up of some of the maybe things I thought I had to talk about and, and there's something else that's going to emerge there. So that's, that's really cool. I'm excited about that as well. When will that happen? In the next couple of days. I'm just Sweet. trying to getting, yeah, I'm just getting all the, the goods together and then it's all going out. So I there's tons of episodes on there that you can tune into. And I don't know, like, honestly, what, when what I do people look up? Lady Talk Radio? Lady Talk Radio. Is it all one word? Lady Talk? Lady Talk Radio. It's all separate. Three words. Oh, got it. So it's like yeah. Lady Talk Radio. Radio. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for clarifying. Yeah. <laughs> When I go and listen to early episodes, it's hilarious. And this was an example of me creating without a lot of strategy. My coach was like, hey, like press play, you know, kind of thing. Yes. We, were, we were just creating. And and I was like drinking wine, making podcasts. Like I was, <laughs> it was totally a different, different experience. And I think that you can see the evolution of that show there. So it's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. And so if people are like, I totally resonate with Stacey. I want to reach out to her. Y-O-O-R media.com. Yeah. And you can just reach out to me on Facebook here or Instagram or wherever. Yeah. Stacy Ray, R-A-E. R-A-E. Yeah. Yes. Don't get that Y in there. Yes. Thanks. Cool. Heather. Super yes, cool. Um, what I want to share is uh, that I want to share about the Forge for anyone that's curious. I've been pumping and pimping this thing like crazy because it's amazing. The Forge is a nine-month program bay my wife and I run. It is it's ontological, which I think all you need to know about that is it's transformation and it will impact the way you be in the world. And so we don't just work on developing the doing, the actions of coaches and leaders. We work on actually creating the transformation that has them show up and simply be a coach and leader, regardless of the circumstances. And what's cool about that is you don't have to learn a bunch of rules and then be like, how do I, what's the rule for when someone shows up this way? When you change your being, it's like riding a bike. You don't need to go back and read the bike riding manual for when you're presented with a 90 degree left turn. You just know already, you don't even know, you just do what you do as based on the being of being able to ride a bike. So it's incredible. We're, uh, our registration is now open for it. It starts in September. And if that's something you're curious about, you should reach out and talk to me. Um, I love those conversations. Okay. That's everything for today. Thanks everyone who joined us. Stacy, thank you. Bye guys. We love you. Talk to you all soon. Uh, oh, wait, I don't want to do that. I want to end this live. Okay. Now, goodbye everyone. <laughs> <laughs>